Hi there. Apart from my vlogs, I wasn't going to make another video for some time, and here I am making another video. This is getting obsessive now, and I should start stop. <laughs> um, I should quit while I'm winning. Um, I had a discussion with somebody about the difference between occultism and mysticism. Uh, and uh, as you probably know, I I don't really approve of occultism anymore. Um, I have studied it and used it from time to time. And uh, maybe I haven't used it enough, or maybe I haven't studied it enough, or maybe I haven't got proficient at magic enough. Um, but for example, let us take Enochian magic. You know, the 32 calls of Enochian. Uh, I have done the 32 calls, um, but I didn't see God, I didn't find God in these 32 calls. Uh, all I really found uh, is my own subconscious, like a mirror, uh, and I don't like looking in the mirror because I don't like myself, um, for various reasons. Um, so. I actually didn't see much of my subconscious because I can assure you that when I did start seeing it, you know, my mental senses slammed down and said, hey, we're not going to do any, <laughs> do any close analysis of my subconscious, thanks very much. Uh, I'm not, not having anything to do with that. So I kind of failed on that. Um, so then my ego whispered to me, aren't you a wonderful person for doing these 32 calls and aren't you naughty and aren't you rebellious and aren't you aren't you a hit person and uh you know and, uh, and will people be jealous of you or, or ad ad admiring of you and all this um so that wasn't very helpful didn't see god there just saw big ego um and then i i did catch glimpse of uh subtle blind forces of the universe uh and maybe not so subtle um you know, the tsunami, the earthquake, the bushfire, the hurricane. Uh, these are subtle forces of the universe and unsubtle forces of the universe, for that matter. Uh, well, they're unsubtle, but they're, they're, dom they're ruled by subtle forces. Um, and these forces just want to kill you, so, and destroy everything in their path. Uh, and they really don't care about you. Uh, and the other uh, forces in this world uh, just see you as fodder. Uh, you know, like a farmer looks at his cattle and sees profit on four legs. Uh, you know, most of the Goetia just see you as um, something to predate on, exploit and manipulate. And um, so again, I, I couldn't find God and all that. Um, but the idea in magic is, is to create uh, a kind of an extrasensory power uh, that will enable you to penetrate the magical veil. Uh, and 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 uh, see the the vision of the Holy Grail, uh, and to acquire magical power, um, and to walk with the gods, um, and to uh, walk with uh, and to understand and transcend all things. Uh, that's that's the theory. <laughs> so uh, I I just didn't didn't get into it. It's not for me. Um, you know. I just can't be bothered with it all, to be perfectly honest. You know, I like a simple life, really. Um, and if I can't have all of God, I won't have any of God, you know. Um, I, I won't have all this bits and pieces and all this magic stuff and all this Goetia magic. And, you know, it's just all too complicated. I, I'm fed up with it. I can't be bothered with it. I'm too lazy uh, to do it. I know that, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, but it does say in the front of the Golden Dawn magic book, uh, you know, that ego is, the, you know, you, you will have ego. And if you have ego, magic will destroy you. Um, so don't study this book uh, of, of Golden Dawn magic unless you've got rid of your ego. Um, but I thought the idea of, of magic was to get rid of the ego. So <laughs> I'm a bit confused, really. Uh, I mean, which is it, you know? Do you have to start off without an ego to study magic, or will magic get rid of your ego? I should imagine magic probably will, uh, but in a rather vicious and nasty way. A bit like taking a whole load of magic mushrooms 
Um, that will certainly get rid of your ego, but um, it'll also send you insane as well. Well, it sent me insane. Uh, so no, thank you very much. So I don't like magic at all. Um, I can get rid of all my books. I can't sell the stupid things. I'm, I have half a mind to burn them all. Um, anyway, although that's a bit of a waste, really. I ought to sell them and get money for them, I suppose. Um, anyway, so mysticism. Uh, mysticism is not, um, you know, I'm not saying that's easy or an easy alternative to magic because the distractions of this world are many and subtle uh, and gross um, and, and pretty much arrayed against us. And, you know, we have a battle to get anywhere uh, with, with mystical revelation, as it were. Um, well, we have a battle to, to be calm, be silent, uh, be quiet, be humble. It's always a battle to get get to those areas of the mind, uh, for sure. Um, but I think with mysticism, you know, you you've got a syllogy. It's uh, you've got a logical syllogy. Um, you know, um, soul loves God. Uh, I am soul. Therefore, I love God. Uh, and the I here is the eye that sees the it's the inner eye um it's also um soul it's all the eye is soul uh so it's the it's the part of of your consciousness i suppose that can see god without distraction um without ego without un, without subconscious without subtle forces or gross forces getting in the way um you know and, and it's so simple really <laughs> Uh, and all you have to do then, you see, is experience uh, the argument, you know, that, that soul loves God. Uh, I am soul, therefore I love God uh, in, the, in the completeness and fullness of soul. And you just have to uh, experience the feelings, uh, intense feelings of love uh, that go with, the, with that argument. Basically, it's as simple as that. Um, and, that, and that's really, really simple. Um, and also, it, you know, I mean, mea culpa, I, I mean, I'm not going to be, you know, I, I'm not a perfect person. <laughs> you know, and, and the vision of the Holy Grail isn't going to make me a, pers a perfect person. Uh, it's going to connect me to the transcendental. Uh, but if I still have psychological issues, uh, and I still have insecurity, and I still have a self-loathing, you know, well, go and see your psychiatrist about it. Go and see your psychologist, you know. Uh, go to your counsellor about it. Um, we're talking about, and that's in a different compartment uh, to experiencing the transcendental, you see. Um, so that's, that's why I guess that's where it gets complicated because you keep on thinking, oh, you know, this transcendental experience will change me uh, in some way. Uh, like it had better change me or, or I want my money back. Uh, but it doesn't work like that, really. Uh, a mere culpa, you're still, you know, you're still of the world and in the world um, and influenced by the world and distracted by the world and, and screwed up by the world and, um, and, and, and fearful of a lot of things that are in the world. Uh, but despite all this, um, you can experience the transcendental uh, you can experience love, uh, love with and for the divine. Uh, you can enter into alignment with and partnership with the divine, the transcendental divine, um, and God becomes the, uh, the, the point of your life. Um, and you are, are the circle uh, and you're whizzing around this point. Sometimes you're going towards it and sometimes you're going away from it. Um, but always you can experience the point at any time in your life. Um, and that might be something you've got to hang on to uh, because, you know, you're moving fast around the point. You're, you know, you, you know, you're sort of moving and you can't stop. Um, so to be able to experience the point, the still centre at any level, at any time, uh, however, however, over a shorter time during the day, uh, during a 24-hour period, is very good. 
um, in my experience anyway, um, and a lot simpler than all this Enochian Goetia magic and 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 all this tantric stuff and uh, all this terminology and nomenclature, you know, all this superstructure. It seems to me that with mysticism you get to the core of the matter, which is very simple uh, and yet difficult to apply for sure. Um, but at least, you know, you've got a clear target uh, that you're aiming for or aiming at. Uh, you know, even maybe some days you don't even, can't even pull the, pull the string of the bow back. Do you know what I mean? You, you know, you're, you're so weakened by the world that you can't even pull the string of the bow back, never mind, you know, hit the target with the arrow. You, you don't. Uh, but other days you, you're going to pull it back and you're going to let it go and you're going to... Your arrow is going to fi- uh, going to let going to let fly. It's going to loose, um, and you're going to hit the target uh, because you are loose, <laughs> and you are have let go. Do you know what I mean? So, um, uh, so that's kind of nice, really. Um, so that's why I favour mysticism over magic uh, every time. And um, I don't even think, uh, like Alistair Crowley, that mysticism serves some kind of magical end. Um, mysticism is, is on one side uh, of the corridor, um, and magic is on the other. Um, and I and I just you know, I just grow tired and tedious. Uh, well, tediously tired, or tired of the tediousness of magic, on one hand. Um, and I enjoy I enjoy I get pleasure uh, from the simplicity of mysticism on the other. Um, so I suppose that's really, you know, my last word on this matter. Um, I mean, having said that, you know, I, I will work with sigils, work with magical sigils and healing sigils and things like that. I will jump from mysticism into magic, uh, you know, like, like that, uh, if I have to, uh, and if somebody wants me to, uh, but I'm jolly well not going to stay there. <laughs> I'm going to go back to the simplicity of mysticism uh, very quickly after I've jumped around with these magical sigils because, um, you know, because really I'm not interested in the glamour of it all. Um, I, I think existence is, is not glamorous. <laughs> I think survival is not glamorous. Um, I think my psychological issues are not glamorous. I used to think they were. Um, but no, I don't think they are. I think they're a damn nuisance, to be perfectly honest. Uh, and my depression and, and insecurity and self-loathing, I mean, you know, they're not cool. Uh, it's not an artistic kind of thing to have, you know what I mean? I can't go, huh, you know, and pretend I'm some kind of artist because I'm not even a very good artist. You know, it'd be okay if I, if I, was, a, if I was, I don't know, Roman Polanski or, or, or you know, or some great artist, you know, um, some great art director or Tarantino, or if if I could be like that, you know, if I was rich and successful and a brilliant director and a great genius uh, with making filmmaker, then that would be different. Then I could be screwed up, and it you know it'd, be, it'd probably be okay. Well, not really that okay, but you know, sort of compensation for it by being you know being a fantastic director and everybody knows who you are and and you know you're a sort of god in filmmaking industry. Uh, which Tarantino is, I mean, you know, and Polanski uh, was as well. So, uh, and, and, you know, lots of other directors as well, which I can't remember at the moment. Um, but, you know, uh, so you can be really screwed up, but then you could be really creative and really good at what you do, and then okay. But if you're creative and not very good at being creative, um, and you don't haven't won an Oscar, and you haven't even, you know, you haven't won any recognition at all um, for what you've done, uh, then, you know, uh, and, you know, you, then you kind of stay away from creativity as being the be end and end all of everything. Uh, because I think just sitting down comfortably um, and thinking about uh, God and love for God uh, and filling your heart with love for God, um, experiencing, you know, the soul awareness, um, I think that's pretty much all that you can possibly get out of this existence, to be perfectly honest with you, um, really. And I'm not just saying that because I'm defeatist or I've given up. You know, I still do my music composition and I still write my poetry uh, and, I, and I still, you know, 
um, because I you know because I enjoy it uh, and I enjoy the challenge of it. But um, you know, I'm really really not thinking about you know being the being the greatest uh, thing since sliced bread. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, but if you want to uh, and you've got talent and you've got drive and ambition uh, and you're all screwed up and you know, want to compensate for your screwed upness by having ambition and skills and knowledge and and, and social networks and you live in California, uh, then, you know, be my guest, you know, get 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 entangled with it. Um, I mean, I don't think, also Gnosticism, when I say, I said in the beginning I didn't, didn't approve of occultism, I don't think that's right. I don't think the word approve is right. I think I think if if you know if if you want to get all entangled, get your hands nice and dirty with magical power uh, and with creative power, then be my guest. You know, um, I don't. You know, I really don't. And I think, um, and you may say, well, I'm just a loser. Uh, you know, and you can say that if you want. Um, I don't think it's about winners or losers, actually. Uh, I think it's about transcending those two concepts for a start. <laughs> uh, and I say that because I know a lot of Americans, you know, you only have two categories, winner or loser. <laughs> uh, you've got to win the American dream or, or you're a loser. Do you know what I mean? Uh, you know, there's black and white thinking there um, with, with, well, that's my impression of Americans anyway. Uh, you're, as an American, your impression is pretty, very different from that. Uh, in which case I apologise because you probably don't see yourself as an American uh, like like a black and white loser or a winner kind of thinking person. Uh, but um, and of course it's all over the world. There are people thinking I want to be a winner and I don't want to be a loser. Um, and I just don't think I, well I don't want to think like that. Period. Um, so uh, that's just my uh, my little vlog entry for today. Um, trying to explain to you really why I don't uh, I, I don't think Gnosticism has very much to do with being a winner or a loser uh, or being creative or being magical or being powerful uh, or being uh, or being powerless for that matter 